I'm Hunter. This is the Family Showdown! Welcome back, folks. Rebecca and Hunter here, Family Showdown, and today we are doing my top 100 games of all time. This time, we're doing 90 through 81 with my fellow adventurer and heckler, Hunter, helping me go through my list. We'll see if we can break his heart again. If you didn't watch the previous one, there were some upsets. Mostly just him. But there were upset things going on. So we're going to see if we can mess with him some more. Oh, because, dear. as we all know, I'm like super mega omni gamer, and he's starting to turn into heavy gamer. So, what we is like that, in a game. Is that a weight joke? Oh my. Oh my. <laughs> Why do I keep you around? <laughs> it's already started. We haven't even talked about the games yet. That's what you're here for, right? Okay. So, my number 90. This will make you cry too. Oh, this dear. always does. Oh, my. Because technically, it's a kid's game. And that is outfoxed. Oh my. Now, normally I would not put a kid's game on here, but the gaming experiences that we have had with this game are fantastic. It does not insult the kids' intelligence. You know, it's a cooperative game, but they have to piece together. It's kind of a whodunit, and they're finding out who the guilty fox is, and they have to use, you know, process of elimination, but the clues that they have, and work together to get the clues in the first place and every time we've had a really good time we haven't even won all of our games and we've tried it at the more challenging levels and it's just it's a really fun game I highly recommend this for families and kids it's two to four players and it goes pretty quickly probably I think it says 20 minutes on the box and that's probably about right it's a really fun game we I, the girls love this game they absolutely love it yeah it's an amazing amazing kids game and we had a good time playing it, too, with yeah, them. So, yeah, um, yeah, Okay, I'll let it slide. Exactly. Once. Totally worth it. This is your one pass. My one pass? Oh, oh, so Champions of Midgard wasn't my one pass? No, one pass at a kid's game. Oh, okay. There's no, there's no redeeming that. So that was my number 90. My number 89 is... Suburbia. Mm. I am a fan of tile placement games, and this is city building and tile placement, which I really enjoy. What's fun about this is as you're building your city, the tiles that you lay down, you have to think about what you're going to put next to them and what is already there that you will be neighboring those because you can get extra benefits or some kind of negative effect based off of where they're what they're touching. And it also has things where you're building sidewalks and stuff like that. And I really love the the gameplay for this. I, it's just a really fun city building game. So if you like tile placement, check this one out. Yep, that's a good one. Yep. Not good enough, but good one. Oh, wow. Was it higher on your list? No, no, it's not on my list. <gasps> what? What? See, he likes this one more than another one that I like that'll be later on. That's uh, Oh, wait, it is on my list. I lied. Uh huh. It's a cheat, so it's hard to see. Oh. 62. Yeah, I thought I did like see? that. See? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I thought you liked it more than I did, and he did. So that's Suburbia. That's my 89. My number 88 is a family game. And that is from the Tales and Games line, which actually does kids' games. So this is technically considered a kids' game. The Hare and the Tortoise. And he's shaking his head because it's a kids' <laughs> game. But we have played this with adults and had a blast. We've played it with kids and had a blast. We've played it with family group of mixed ages. Had a blast. Every time we play this, we have a blast. And some of the little perks to it. I, I love the Tales and Games line for their clever boxing. It's set up to look like a book. And it's got the magnetic clasp. And all the pieces fit nicely into this little book. And... It's just a simple racing game. You've got a little racetrack that you build on the uh, table, and you're placing bets down to, well, not placing bets, you're placing down cards that give you the movement and how much you move the animals, and you secretly, at the beginning, are trying to plug for one or two animals to win, and depending on if they got first, second, or third place, they get a certain number of points, and then the most points you have at the end, you win. And it's just a lot of fun. Um, 
our girls really love this one too and it's just it's been a hit with everyone we've played this with and it's it's great for all ages yeah i mean i make make fun of it this is a kids game but actually this is one one of the kid type of kids games i do really enjoy is that it works well with adults adults could play this game and have fun with it we have yeah. and do <laughs> so it's a kids game that plays well as adult whereas out fox is an awesome 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 kids game but the adults are kind of long for the ride right yeah that yeah. is definitely the case yeah um, that's a parenting experience right there. But this one, yes, you can have fun with gamer friends, non-gamer friends, because this is a good gateway game, because yep. it's easy to teach to anybody. So, yep. that one, the hare and the tortoise. Yeah, I, I, won't, I won't begrudge that one. Yeah, exactly, because it's awesome. <laughs> so, now we're on to my 87, and this is another one that we would consider a family weight game. But it's not sold in the kids' game section by any stretch, and that's Takenoko. And yes, um, some people might consider that a kids' game because it looks like a kids' game. Um, it's got a little panda that you're moving around and building up bamboo, but it's got enough tactics to it that you would it, adults play this. And we've had, again, a blast playing as family, just friends, gamer friends, non-gamer friends. This is a great gateway game, and I think it's around for the long haul. It's just a really cute game. The pieces are beautiful. And I'll show you really quickly because it is just so cute. Don't look OCD. Some of the pieces got mixed. Oh my. <laughs> but the, um, the bamboo pieces, they're really brightly colored. They're really cute and they stack up really nicely. And here's the little adorable panda. So you can see him. And he moves around and he eats some of the bamboo. And you have gold cards that give you victory points. So you have to have the panda eat a certain number of a certain type of bamboo. Or you have to have a certain number grow in the garden. So you have the gardener move around and help water them and help them grow. And um, you also have uh, uh, points, um, cards based off of what color tiles you lay down in a certain pattern. And things like that to get different points. And whoever gets the most of those sorts of cards accomplished at the end wins. Very fun game. Yeah, it's a, it's another one kind of along the lines of the hare and the tortoise where it's kid weight-ish, but it's fun for adults to play. Absolutely. Yep. And there's some mega deluxe version out there. I don't know how horribly expensive it is, but it's got a ginormous... How big is the panda in that thing? Yeah, yeah it's a ridiculously huge game, and it's got <laughs> beautiful pieces made out of bamboo and stuff, yeah. and just ridiculous. So if you really get into the game, there's a deluxe <laughs> version for that. So that one is my 87, Takanoko. And now we're moving on to my 86, which is the meanest game <coughs> we own. Oh, geez. <coughs> and that is Survive, Escape from Atlantis. If you don't like Take That games, this is not for you. This is the most Take That of Take That games, because that is what this game is about. You, are, you have a whole bunch of your little meeples on an island, but the island is disappearing as this volcano is getting ready to explode. So you have to jump across the ocean to another island for safety. In the meantime, there are sea monsters and whales and sharks. They're going to capsize your boats, eat your little dudes as they're swimming away, or both, all of the above. And so of course you're sending the, you can move the monsters wherever you want. So you're moving those away from you and toward the other players, right? And that's what happens in spades in this game. So it is a very mean game, not for the faint of heart, but very hilarious if you have thick skin and a sense of humor. Yeah, it's it's a hundred percent take that. I mean, it really <laughs> is a brutal game, and you have to play with the right audiences because we tried this with our oldest daughter, and she was in tears halfway through the game, and <laughs> she packed, packed it up and put it away. <laughs> but if you got if you get a group of friends together to play this, that. Uh, love, you know, ragging on each other, and then, you know, it's just, it's just a hilarious, fun experience. It's fantastic. So, yes, definitely check out Survive. Thank you. All right, and then my next one is my number 85, and this is a recent acquisition for us. Um, one of you, actually, I think recommended it to us, too, yep. and that is Targi. This is going to, to become, I think, one of our go-to two-player games. Yeah. And I have a feeling that the more we play this, this may go higher up on my list. Just because of it's, it's really portable. It doesn't take up too much space on the table. And it's a really fun game. The, you lay out a tableau of cards in the middle. The border cards are always the same, but the cards that are inside that change. So the game is not going to be the same from game to game. 
and you're doing worker placement, but it's set up like Automania where you've got your people set up and then what, um, where the crisscross is where the action is. Yeah. So that's really fun, and so you're picking these actions and trying to get resources and juggling all of that and get the most points to win, like every game. Yep. And I just, I, I really like the two-player interaction with this. this is yeah, great. it's a great little uh, quick-ish, I mean, it's about an hour or so, yeah. two-player game. It's just, it's just a great, fun little kind of resource gathering, good victory point getting a yeah. like, quick little easy game. And I, it's, I think it's quickly, uh, as we get to play it more, I think it's going to become more addictive and we're going to Yeah, I was just looking at my list and... Well, we didn't have it Right, I'm just, I'm just saying whether it would make my list, and I'm just looking at my list, it probably would make, would have made my list oh. if, if I played this before. Um, before we made it? Yeah. Oh, I bet so, yeah. yeah. So, that's a good one. thank you for your recommendations, we do listen to them. Yeah. And we like this one a that's lot. That's a good one. Targi. Yep. So that one is my 85, and now we're going to my 84 which is a beast of a game here. Getting a little bit of a workout. It's very heavy. Oh, yeah. And this game, Pitch Car. Um, dexterity game. You have very nice, sturdy tracks, and they've got little plastic guards to keep your wooden cars from flying completely off of the board. <laughs> and it's a race. You're just flicking them across, and whoever gets across the finish line first wins. And that's almost all of the rules to the game right there is that easy to teach. This has been a blast to play with kids, with adults, gamers, non-gamers, doesn't matter. It's very fun to play. And yes, at Dice Tower Con, we had the um, Pitch Car World Championships and I got third. Yeah. So anyway, thank you dear. Nice plug. So <laughs> it's, it's a really fun game. And I, I didn't rank it this highly because of my winnings, because that was completely yeah. out of yeah. the blue. Right. It's really fun to play this game. And if I would have won it. this, it would have been my number one game of the whole time. Would it have? No. <laughs> but it is my it is high, 42. Yeah. yeah. But you like dexterity games, I think, more than I do. Because I tend to not be as good. I, what's funny about me winning that is... It was more a twist of fate than anything, I swear. I, I, I had some good shots, too, I guess. I think you basically kind of took it, you played it safe, and it worked out for you, right? Mostly safe. I did play mostly safe. Yeah. I did have a couple daring plays, but not nothing crazy, and I think that's what saved me at the end. I played it safe at the end. A lot of people were taking really risky shots trying to win, and I snuck in behind them because they crashed. <laughs> But also there was a there was a really hard jump for early on in the oh, course, yeah, and, and, and the people that got over it quickly broke away from the pack, and then there was this mass of humanity that was stuck at the Fighting at the, the bridge jump. at the jump first jump. Yep, and I managed to squeak through that one. But anyway, so. no, no, it's an awesome awesome uh, dexterity game. It's it's kind of pricey, but if you um, just by the base game, you got a really solid game. Oh yeah, just straight um, out of this box. And you can look. They tell you you can build several different tracks just with this one game. And there are expansions if you want to invest the money and you really like this. That include bridges and jumps and all sorts of crazy right. things that you can add to that. And we have one expansion, and honestly, that's been plenty for us. We've yeah. had a ball with this. Yeah. And the girls love to mix up the tracks and do all that. So, great family game. Yep. Great game. Game. One. Pitch car. There's your dexterity game. And now we are on to my 83. And this one kind of hits the word game nut in me. Mm -hmm. For people that like Scrabble and things like that, you will appreciate paperback. This is a fun little, again, highly portable word game. It doesn't take up too much table space, so it would be a good game to travel with as long as you have some table space. And what you're doing is you're collecting cards and building up your, your deck so that you can build larger and more complicated words to get more and more points and to collect some victory points through your combos and different things. And it's really cute. All of the bonus cards and stuff have cute little genre books with the cute art and the author's name on them is Paige Turner. And they have a lot of goofy little things like that on there. I just love. So the artwork's really cute, the gameplay's really fun, and I think this would be a great game to as a gateway game for, um, like we were talking about, Scrabble players and people yeah. that have played some of the mainstream old word games that you want to break into some of the more modern games. This would be a great one for that. Yep, that one just missed my list. It was just off the bottom of yeah. my list. So yeah, I like that one. It's, it's just a great little light deck builder that 
it's like that word game, word a word game and a deck builder and kind of mushed them together. And it was, yeah. It's just a, it's a, it's a good one. It's a good one. Yeah, it is, and I like word games way more than you do, so I'm not surprised that it wasn't on your list. But this is one of those that we, um, for it's a little bit longer on the two player end for us if we're going to just throw down a little game because I think it's an hour. I want to say it's over an hour. It says 45 minutes, but I think it eh, that may be a little bit. Yeah, the, a little the, bit the issue I have with that game is I always want to try to use all my cards. So I'm sitting there just, <laughs> yeah. my brain's melting. I'm just staring. At, <laughs> I gotta use all my cards. Eventually, I just give up and make a, like a four letter word. You give it, give it up. <laughs> <laughs> a four letter word. <laughs> that has so many interesting meanings here. Literally, what, literally a four letter <laughs> word. <laughs> so that's what's fun about playing paperback with winners. <laughs> So yeah, it's it's really fun. And then, oh, the other thing is too, there are a lot of different variants that you can play with that. We've only played a couple, really and truly, because we yeah, enjoy... there's like a solo variant and all kinds of different. Well, different bonuses you can play with a theme, and you get bonuses if you no, put yeah, words yeah. down that are like, say, go with a pirate theme or mm -hmm. something. And we've only done that a few times, and we still yeah, it's just a blast. We haven't even tapped into everything that that game has. So that's paperback my number eighty three, and now we are on to my eighty two, which is a. Definitely a go-to game for us as two-player, and that is mm -hmm. Patchwork. Mm -hmm. This is another portable game. However, this one takes up a lot more table space because what you're going to do is you're going to set up a giant circle with all these crazy pieces. I'll show you the little pieces. This game is Tetris with quilting, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. You've got crazy tetris -y shaped pieces, and you're going to have your own player mat. Each of us have a player mat, and you're going to try to fill it in with as few to no gaps as possible because on your board at the end of the game there's negative points for any spaces that are left open. There's two sort of currencies in the game. You've got buttons which help you buy these things and then there are of course the, the time which is on the main board for the game which each of these pieces costs, well most of the pieces, some of them don't have a cost but they have a cost of time that zips you through to the end. And sometimes that's a good thing, sometimes that's a bad thing. That's part of the game balance because if you buy a whole bunch of expensive ones, you are going to get to the end of the game before you've had a chance to fill up your board. So there's a really neat balance between that and, of course, trying to beat the other player to the good-shaped pieces <laughs> before you have to start getting really creative. And that's patchwork. We really enjoy playing that one a yeah, lot. That's a really so. good one. It was my number 93. Oh wow, so roughly the same weight to you as well. Yep, that's yep. pretty good. No, that's a really good one. I enjoy yep. it. It's one of my favorite little And this one's easy to teach to people. Um, I've talked to a couple different people and it's always gone over really well. It's another casual game. Oh yeah. You play that and talk at the same time. All right, and then after Patchwork comes the last one for today, which is my number 81, and that is... Mm. Timeline Challenge. We are big fans of the timeline games. You can get those in a little tin, real low price point. They're really fun. You're um, competing with other people to create a timeline. That's literally it. And this takes those cards and made a board game out of it. It's got its own set of timeline cards, but if you want to add some variability, you can use any of the other timeline versions in this game which is something I really like about that. And so you've got a really, it's got a really large board and it's very colorful. I'm hope, hope, yeah, it looks like you can see it pretty well. You get to challenge each other to like mini games of timeline and different variations and forms as you're right. going across. It's kind of roll and move across that board. Um, Except you, how much you move is like based off of your wins and different yeah. things. So how it's, well you do at each little task. Right? Yeah, and it's so it's really fun. Everybody's trying to duke it out for the to get to the finish line first because you win that way, and it's it's a really fun game. And we like the timeline stuff. So everybody, you know, you get to it's a learn as you go game too because you're doing all these different dates of major discoveries or who did this and that, and it's it's I like the. The fact that it's a really fun game on top of a learning game, which is really rare to have both. Yeah, it takes that little simple little timeline card game and makes a, a full-blown board game out of it, which I like. And um, like you said, you can mix and match whichever sets you want. You can even go crazy and mix them all together, which yeah. we haven't done yet. Yeah. But someday we'll get we crazy. We will, yeah. I, I just, when you mix them all together, I think there's no going back. <laughs> I wouldn't want to resort yeah, those. There, yeah, I think I they're... wouldn't want to resort all those. Try to figure out how to resort those all those cards. And that would be a pain. But I think it'd be fun to have, you know, an invention and then some Americana and then like a, you know, discovery and it's just a, just a complete mesh of everything. So someday yeah. we'll do 
epic timeline. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty epic without that too. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's it's fun. So. It's a fun little game. It's got these cool little boards that you do your little dates on and stuff. It's it's really yeah. Cool. The the individual player boards yeah. are fantastic. Yeah. I really love how they tricked up this game. Yeah. So if you like the timeline game and you want to mix it up a little bit, definitely check this one out. Did I mention that it was my ninety five? No, you did not. Yeah, it's my ninety five. Okay, that doesn't surprise me because we really enjoy that one. And this is another good family game too. Yep. So that is my set of 90 to 81, and come back again soon for my next set of 10. See you later.